All right, newbies, so you've made the leap and upgraded that basic old plain network to a ubiquity network. But now what? Well, you may want to look at creating some VLANs to separate your network traffic. Not only is it going to make your network run more efficiently, but it's also going to give you the opportunity to secure your network using zone-based firewall rules, which I'll cover in a later video. But which VLAN should you make? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you five starter VLANs that fit into almost every home setup to get you started. So let's get going. Now, one of the nice things about using Ubiquity is its ability to easily create VLANs in your network for your devices. However, getting started can be challenging. And after watching today's video, you might realize that you have a special circumstance in your home that I just didn't cover today. So if this is you, I would encourage you to look at joining one of my network newbie boot camps, which I host to help people in that situation. Not only are we gonna spend a full session talking about VLANs, but I also open it up to Q&A before every single session to try and answer those questions for you so you can get going in the right direction. Now, spots are limited, so if this is something that interests you, I encourage you to take a look at the link in the description and get started today. All right, so the first VLAN I wanna talk about is the one that comes on every single system out there, whether you use Ubiquity or not you have to have a VLAN 1. Ubiquity calls this the default VLAN, which you can see shown here. So if I click into that, you can see we have a default VLAN. It, we can't even choose a VLAN ID because it just automatically defaults to being VLAN 1. However, there are a lot of YouTube videos out there that you may watch where people will recommend to abandon the default network altogether. I've even had some videos myself where I showed people how to do that. However, when you're just starting out, I just don't think that's necessary. And so what I recommend would be to change this to something other than 192.168.1.1 because that is a highly used IP address for VLAN 1 and sought out by a lot of attackers to try and gain access to systems. So I would recommend changing the IP scheme and then I plan on using this as my management VLAN. Now, what is a management VLAN? The management VLAN is what all my equipment connects to. So it'll be the IP address of my access points and my switches. I like to put all of them on a network. And so a lot of them, a lot of people will recommend using something like a management VLAN and pick something completely different altogether. However, I just don't really see a need for that. I think it overcomplicates your network. Um, and this is a home network setup. We're not talking about businesses and stuff like that. We're talking about a general home setup. So I just don't believe in overcomplicating things if we don't have to. However, I do like the idea of my network equipment being connected and being separate from all the other VLANs we're gonna talk today. So I would recommend changing this to something else. Again, you don't even have to use a 192.168. You can use 172.16 or 10. whatever. Um, to, for this network. However, just pick something other than 192.168.1.1 and use the default network as your management VLAN for all of your network equipment. So as you can see, I have changed mine to 10.10.1.0 and that is gonna be my new default IP subnet. Now I do like to make a one be in the third position here because it is VLAN one and I just think that helps you remember which VLAN you're actually on. So 10.10.1 would be VLAN 1, 10.10.5 would be VLAN 5, and so on and so forth. So I do try to make a 1 be in that third octet just to kind of make things a little easier for you. And if we click over into my devices here, you'll see that everything has pulled a new IP address on that default VLAN because that's the only VLAN we have today. Now let's move on to VLAN number two. Now the next VLAN that we're gonna be creating is a really important one, and I believe that every network out there needs this VLAN. I'm calling it the home slash trusted network, right? And you can call it whatever you like. However, this is the VLAN that we're creating to put the devices that we really wanna protect on the network. Devices that access sensitive data or personal information. So we're talking about our laptops, desktops, work computers, um, tablets, cell phones, things like that. If you go online, typically you're going online um, to do something constructive using one of these devices here, okay? So we wanna protect these devices from the outside world and outside threats. When you have a plain old everyday router where everything can talk to everything, if something gets compromised clear over here, they could gain access to this sensitive data and which leaves yourself a little bit vulnerable to outside attacks. 
by isolating it and putting these devices in their own VLAN, we can protect them in a way that helps out with this very, very thing. So if you move to the example, you can see I created a home slash trusted VLAN and I'm calling it VLAN2. And I gave it a 10.10.2.1 network address. Um, again, that third octet kind of dictating what our VLAN ID is. And so I'm just calling this one VLAN2. So the next VLAN we're gonna create, I'm calling the untrusted IoT VLAN. And we're gonna be putting anything that is deemed smart in this VLAN. So it's gonna be a catch-all for a lot of the other devices on our network. Now, the reason this is important is because devices like this typically don't get security patches on a regular basis. And because of that, they can be seen as vulnerabilities on the network. And so by putting them in their own network or in their own VLAN, we can kind of isolate them from the rest of the network, like our home and trusted devices. So we make sure that if something did get compromised over here, it doesn't have direct access to our personal information. And so we're gonna create this untrusted IoT VLAN and put all those devices there. Now we're gonna be talking about things like smart switches, smart plugs, smart appliances. I would even go as far as saying smart cameras like Ring or Eufy, devices like that. I would also include gaming systems, um, sound systems like Sonos, things like that. Although Sonos is kind of one of those areas that we probably would need to talk about a little bit more depending on how you use it in your home. But if you just kind of want to be able to run it, this is a good spot to at least start it. Because again, we just don't know how often these devices are being patched. And so we want to protect ourselves from them. So if you move over to the example, you can see I created an untrusted IoT. We called it VLAN 3 and we gave it the network 10.10.3.1, okay? And again, you can use whatever IP scheme you wanna use. I would just avoid the 192.168.1.1 for your default VLAN. Um, and it's nice when you kinda, once you kinda go figure out which direction you wanna go, you can kinda just continue to use that IP scheme for the rest of your VLANs. It makes it easy to manage and easy to remember. Now VLAN number four might be kind of optional to a lot of you out there, and that is just a guest network. We want to basically give our guests their own VLAN so we can create very specific rules on how guests need to be treated. Now, some of you out there might not get a lot of guests, or if, they, if you do, it's family and you're just gonna let them connect to the regular network, and that's perfectly okay. But the one thing I'll caution you is, is you don't really know how patched, how often grandma updates her laptop if she brings it along with her. Cell phones and tablets, that's one thing. But again, even them, I've picked up my parents' devices and there's 300 updates that they just haven't touched. And I don't mean to pick on the parents out there, but in all honesty, those devices you're basically welcoming into your network. And so by putting them in a guest network, it doesn't mean you don't trust grandma, it just means you don't trust her updating schedule on her devices. And so I think it's important to kind of protect your network from those things because it, like my dad, for example, would love to go out and search the internet for free games and so he, that he could play. However, his computer was riddled with malware all the time because of this. So if he came over to my house, there was no way I was gonna let him join my regular network. It's just the way it is. And so we, we would have him join guests. He could play his free games, do his things, but those devices would not have access to anything else in the network. All he wanted to do was get to the internet anyway. It wasn't, he didn't need to print or run my lights or do any other things. And so basically this is a way to allow outside people to still get on your network and protect yourself, okay? So if we move over into the example here again, this one's gonna look a little bit different. And I, I do this on purpose. I don't really know why. It's more of a personal preference. You don't have to mimic this. You could have just make it uh, VLAN 4 if you wanted to. But I called my VLAN network 99, and I gave it a 10.10.99.255 with a VLAN ID of 99. Again, matching that third octet in our IP scheme there. Now, I guess the reason I do this is because when I'm looking at my list of clients connected in my network, maybe if I have guests, the 99 ones will jump out at me, right? They're, they're seen as um, something different. My eyes will catch that. And so if I just have it on four, I got to remember that four is guests, but 99 is really easy to remember because it's kind of off the wall. So that's my personal preference why I do it. You guys don't have to mimic that. Just give it a VLAN ID and, um, and an IP address and you'll be good to go. But I just wanted to share why I do that because I know I get, I get that question a lot in the comments. All right, so the last VLAN I want to talk to you guys today about in your five starter VLANs that work in almost every single home is the camera or surveillance VLAN. 
Now what we're actually talking about here is actually physically connected cameras, sometimes wireless too, in the case of Unify, that record back to a physical NVR in the home. If you're using devices like NAST or Arlo or Ring that use a cloud NVR service that you pay a monthly fee to access your recordings, I really see those as IoT devices and should be part of the IoT network. They just need access to the internet so they can do their thing. Um, and if that is you, that's fine. You don't need this VLAN at all. So um, I would just stick them in the IoT VLANs. However, if you're using Unify Protect or you went to Costco and bought some kind of third-party camera system, it is best practices to give them their own network. This way you can control what the camera system has access to as well as what has access to the camera system. So if you move over to our example here, I created one called cameras. And again, you can call it surveillance or whatever makes sense in your case. I called it VLAN 4 and it is a 10.10.4.1. So we kind of just continued the the list down in our VLANs and, and created VLAN 4 for this. Again, you guys can use whatever you want. You can go 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever makes sense for you guys in your own home network. The IP schemes, these are just examples that you can use. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap things up today. Um, I, hopefully, this will give you a good starter list. Now, please keep in mind that everybody's home network is a little bit different. Everybody has special devices. And so if something wasn't really covered in here and you have a question, by all means, leave a comment below, and we'll try to get it answered as quickly as possible. Or if you just want a little bit more help in this area and your internet is in the boot camp, check out the link in the description as well. Um, thank you, guys, as always, for watching. Um, please like or subscribe, and we'll see you guys down the road in a future video.